So this is a quick video to show you guys how to set up uh, Active Directory on a Windows domain. Uh, we're going to use the old machine, the Bitter machine. The process is same for everything, so it doesn't matter. Again, Active Directory is a database. It's a database of all the users. Most organizations use Active Directory. The reason we use Active Directory on most organization is if you have multiple computers to manage. Let me take this guy off. Okay, if you have multiple computers, let's say we have hundreds of computers to manage, right? Like we need to deploy software, we need to manage them, we need to make sure the security health is good. If you take the defense classes, you will learn how to do all those things, right? So what would you do if you have five computers, that's okay. You can log into each one, configure them manually, like updates and what times updates need to be run, log in and install software. But if you have hundreds of computers right if you have hundreds of computers it's going to be really 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 hard to manage them because they're going to have a lot of it team to manage them to eliminate this issue we have something called a dc dc stand for domain controller this is called centralized management so all these computers can be managed by a central server call Windows Server 2008, 2012, now all the way to 2019. You guys should download and practice actually. It's a good skill to learn how the domain controls were set up and controlled by them. So once you have a domain control set up, this one has a database. One of the important files called ntds.dat. That's actually the database file that hackers get access to. Why it's important? This database file has a usernames as well as passwords saved on on this here for the all these computers and users okay computers can computers need to be joined to the domain as well as once you join to the domain these computers can pull this username information to log into this each individual computer so remember now you can see right data goes back and forth on this red wires you see here so what we're doing here is we're setting up this domain control setting up a database this database is used on windows call uh, Windows server is called Active Directory. You will see the word AD stand for Active Directory. It's used the latest one used lightweight act, 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 lightweight Active Directory protocol. Uh, anyway, this is where you actually um, set up a domain controller and add the computer. So we'll use Windows 7 or Windows 10 MA that you have on your lab to set up a domain controller and log into it really. Uh, it should not take that long. So the need to, for do, to do this, you need to go here and open the server manager. This is the older version, but still we could do it here. If you expand the roles, whereby S role is already installed. This is where uh, you guys that, that had that ha 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 page. Uh, if you want to change that, I can show you really quickly. Uh, we can go to my default web page. Okay, right click on here, go to um, explore. And if you go to this explore, this is where the ha ha file that I showed you guys before. Uh, so you can add anything to customize. So any any web page you added here for web server on Windows, it's gonna show up. Let's say I build a web page, I add, add everything including this index file, that's gonna add it to this specific uh, web page. So uh, going forward, uh, that's just out of the topic, but there's a role already installed. Then there's features as well. Features are different compared to roles, and you'll see what services are running. It has a really nice interface on server 2019. So to add a role, you right click here and click add roles. Okay, and this is a pretty nice, easy uh, management service that you could add here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the Active Directory domain services. Okay, these are the features that need to be added to create a Active Directory domain controller. I'm gonna go ahead and add the file services as well because we're gonna, uh, Okay, you can do it together. So let's do the Active Directory and then we'll add the file services because I want to set up SMB share and show you guys how SMB 1, 2 is vulnerable and it can exploit them. Uh, so click Next, Next, uh, click Install. That's going to install just the role, okay? That's not going to actually uh, configure the role, but we do have to configure the role after you uh, finish installing the role. So I'm going to pause this video and come back when this is finished installing. Um, I'll uh, install the file services and we'll configure the Active Directory. Okay, so Active Directory is in finished installing and you will see here it says run DC promo to make this server functional as a domain controller. And it's here, so, uh, if you click this one, actually it'll 
prop up the domain controller. So I'm we're gonna let's go ahead and set up a domain controller really quick. Uh, I'm just again pretty easy setup. Okay, uh, you here it's asking about do you already have a domain control? If you already have a domain control, you can use existing for us. Since we don't have domain control, we're gonna create a new domain controller, and you need to give a name, right? The structure again based on the domain .com. Uh, dot local it's used that domain architecture you already familiar with so i'm going to call this meet um, dot local since we have the name machine you can give any name uh, you cannot give dot com name uh, you have to have a domain name purchase but to run locally inside internal networks you could use any name you want uh, let's say if i want to do deep like let's go with that let's use our first name steep dot local that's something you could do and that's gonna now it's gonna go ahead and check if there's any other domain controllers with the same name uh, once if we if it, because we don't want to conflict you can use the same names so that's once that's done you should be able to um, uh, go a few more steps okay so that's detected there's no name here and here again if you own a different domain you will have multiple different versions. basically this is saying if you have all the domain controls you have to go from the bottom there's a lot here but we're gonna go to the highest uh, forest functional level here okay you could take time to read this okay if you when I teach server classes these we go into more details but right now we're just setting up a basic domain controller and now uh, it needs DNS because when you use domain control it's use the naming instead of the uh, uh, objects so we need made to make it easier it's going to install DNS as well uh, and it's going to add DNS records so when you add computers it can use the name instead of an IP address and all for the other object as well so DNS plays a key role on Active Directory uh, databases on centralized management. Okay, now it's uh, detected that there's no DNS server and saying we need to install DNS server, so that's good. Uh, we'll use the IP addresses. It needs static IP addresses. Uh, anytime when you set up a domain control, it needs the static IP address. It cannot change. Remember, because all the other computers talk to the domain control, if the IP address changes, you're not going to be able to detect and know if that computer's there. Uh, again, delegation saying we need to delegate this domain controller and this is where I remember I talked about database folders gonna be NTDS and there's gonna be a file called NTDS.dat that's the database file for Windows Active Directory this is where hackers grab this hash passwords are hash but they try to crack them using the hash you need to provide a password so I'm just gonna go with the same pass basic password very bad practice this is a lab so that's okay uh, you could also export the settings now it's going to go ahead and install that specific service and it's need to be rebooted so i'm going to stop here uh, you when you do this setup it'll go ahead and reboot the system and come back after it also i want to show up uh, here uh, i ran the uh, inium for linux command for this machine so right now this machine does not have a domain control installed so when you run inium linux for this specific machine it detected some of the stuff like uh, non usernames okay for this machine uh, uh, it found the domain workgroup name because it's, it's a workgroup it's not a domain it found uh, some information here the vagrant the name of the computer okay the MAC address okay um, server allow sessions using username password okay so that's one of the things that it found out okay uh, for the down it did find those information but it says it couldn't initiate any uh, shared files that's one thing we need to do with SMB share could not find server using um, the some of the queries it ran okay uh, domain users in your DOM users it didn't find anything either uh, password policies it didn't find anything it didn't find any shares okay uh, uh, SMB okay Pro SMB protocol fail uh, fail to get the password with RPC clients you could run all these commands manually uh, it, uh, did some built-in group information uh, again here saying uh, so could not get initialize uh, any domain information that's basically what I'm going to show so we'll run this again once the domain control is done and see if we can get more information uh, related to the domain control look look like it's restarting okay once restart I'll log in and I'll let you uh, we'll install the file services and I'll show you the uh, little bit about Active Directory here Okay, so once you log in, now you see when you log in, it does have a different information here. It says deep in front of it and then the usernames. All the other usernames that you saw before, like the hack me, it's gone because those are local accounts. You could click switch use accounts and get into the other account. Let's see 
I can log in with the password. So there's no password here because we don't give, we didn't give a uh, administrator password because the purple is the password I was given. P U R P L A. Uh, yeah. So it's given that normally when you log into domain controller, it says the password's been expired and you need to give a new password. So I'm going to give purple one. Okay, and log in. Okay. So that's the password, easy password I put. Uh, yeah, see now, because of the password linked, even with this starting this uh, domain controllers, there's a group policy called um, um, group policy won't meet, meet a complexity. You have a number and a special character. So I'm going to name it as uppercase P number one, uppercase purple number one okay you can always change the password and this is something i want to show you if you're going to go back to purple uh, you could change back uh, change the complexity all those things can be done but it's good right because we need to know we already know uh, it's uh need to be uh, use complex password when you have domain control i'm going to do ask me later don't worry about these parts uh, if it asks you to activate it it's just a lab purpose we are doing this uh, so if you open the server manager now if you go to the roles you will see now a new role called active directory domain services under here this is where you will see active directory users and computers and this is the domain that we created under there again to see the file structure this is more tree structure when you add computers you will see here most importantly the users are going to be here okay if you properties the properties of the user now you'll see multiple different options are here Okay, so when you add a, a domain account, you can customize with multiple other stuff account here. And also you could right click here and reset the password here. So if I want to use my old password, might be able to do it. Okay. Uh, I don't need to unlock the account. Yeah, it didn't meet the complexity. You need to keep the complex password, right? So now when you look at it here with this directory, you will see some old users that used on the midterm. They've been populated here because these users, that local users, uh, local users accounts are saved on local machines. So I'll show you how to find that as well. If you go to right click computer and go to manage, uh, ex actually it pops up here now. It's There's no local user account. So these are all the local account I had before. Now they become the domain account. Okay. Also, now we have DNS running, DNS server running. Okay. DNS servers here you can always verify them by doing ns lookup okay when you do ns lookup it should say deep dot local um, again it might not resolve properly because i haven't set up this static ip address that's a problem but if you expand the dns um, actually choose the name of the one but if you look go to the four lookup zones you should see the deep dot local is there some records there's a lot here don't worry about these things um, um, about the machines and all the records here this is basically an a record that's a mapping from ipv4 to ipv6 you could create quad a record for ipv6 con uh, the c name for long name mapping to a small ip address mail for mail servers so when you add all those things it's just so customizable here there's more granular things you could do with active directory but for this class, basically, I want to show you guys is the users. The database of these users are here. Now we can go and add a computer to this domain. So before you do that, pay attention here. What you need to do here is you need to find the IP address of this computer before you join a computer. So the IP address for this computer is 139. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And let's say I want to add this Windows 7 computer. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and power it up. I'll come back. Uh, Actually, let's go ahead and add this Windows 10 machine. That's fine. Okay, I have here that can enable video I did. So to join domain, join a computer to a domain. Uh, yes, I want to exit. Uh, you need to go to the computer settings. You need to go to um, uh, when you click on it. It's so much easier with the older system. Right click, open a uh, file explorer, right click and go to properties of the computer. Okay. And right now it's part of the work group. Click here, change settings, change here again, and type win 10, and then the name of the domain, okay? And you'll find out when you do this, it might not work, okay? You might gonna say domain controller couldn't find, because remember we talked about the DNS, right? The computer used the DNS settings to find the other computer. 
Um, so this computer does not know what's a DNS server. So while that's gonna error out, I'm gonna show up, see here's the error came out. You go to the change adapter properties, go to Ethernet zero, okay? Go to IPv4 settings, okay? You can go to advance here and DNS and add a space extra DNS server. If you wanna keep your current DNS and use the other DNS, you could use this advanced setting. So I add the 7139, that's my midterm, that's my domain controller. So let's see once we do that, if we can join it, minimize it in case, okay, click OK again. If that works properly, you should get an authentication. See, now you got the authentication, right? It's saying you need to provide a username and password of that domain. So not everybody can join. Your account has to have a domain admin account. So I'm gonna do the administrator and the new change password, uppercase P, purple, number one is the one i use as a pa password you could use anything because these have snapshot i can always change them back so once you do this it's going to say welcome to the domain okay and now it has to be restarted so, okay the thing in information to be applied it needs to be restarted once we restarted this while it's restarting i want to show up here now if i go to the computers folder and refresh it Okay, now you see that Win10 computer is added to the domain. That computer wasn't there before. Now that computer became a part of the domain controller. What's the advantage now? Remember we talked about our organization, right? We have now domain controller, DC is here. Okay, it's hard to write. And then now have the Win10 computer here. I'm gonna type 10 in there. Now this computer gonna be managed by DC. Now I can push software for these computers, control password policies with restricted passwords. Um, multiple things share, uh, create a shared folders and all kinds of things you could do here. Uh, so to uh, let's go ahead and add that uh, file sharing role as well while we are waiting for here, click add roles, go to next, file services, next, next. And I wanna add the, I'm sh not sure if the, no, I'm not clicking on this. I'm just hoping that there is SMB version one on Windows Server 2008. Uh, let's hope, let's hope it's there. Okay, install, I'm gonna let it install. And I also, let's make this a little bit bigger. I use a command line. I did look online how to enable uh, SMB version one on so 2008 so it told me to run this command okay basically it's adding a registry value okay and um, we can add the registry value to enable uh, smb version one so hopefully that added the smb one version uh, newer version it should be a feature that you should be able to install uh, i'm not sure if that feature is available here branch cat it should basically say smb version one Yeah, I'm just using the command line to enable this. Let's see, let's hope that would enable SMB version one, okay? So uh, how do we uh, test? So we have the SMB version one, uh, we did um, add the file services now, okay? Uh, you can go to the share and management here and let's create a uh, share. So we already have a share here, uh, click provision a share, okay? It's us a location, let's just put it on the C drive, okay? Uh, let's actually create a C drive, new folder, call hack me, okay, uh, click next, okay, uh, no, do not change NTFS permission, let's change edit permission, let's give everyone, okay, uh, let's give everyone full control just to be on, uh, this is not the best way to do it, okay. Just make sure we're just trying to be make it easy to hack, okay? So I select the protocol and access the shared folder. I'm gonna call it SMB, hack me, okay? So you could also do NFS. NFS file sharing is used to connect Linux machine to Windows machines. We just leave it as NFS. Uh, maximum allowed, what is it here? Specify how you shared folder be used to clients accessing SMB protocol. You can use the description to add command. Um, try to hack to me okay access based enumeration let's see if we can allow uh, 
maximum allow enable forgot what is access space okay basically access space enumeration is to hide the files and folders from users who does not have permission for those so it's more actually more a uh, secure option but we are not trying to make it no more secure right okay uh, that's just the offline settings so i'm just going to do the basic settings all users and groups have only read access well, let's do custom permissions let's give everyone full control this is not the safest way guys so you're just trying to make it easier for hack because people will accidentally give everyone permission because it's easy okay we're not going to do coder that means how much um, space you want to give uh, control type of uh, screening i don't think we're not going to do any screening okay plug shoot the no we don't not going to do dfs okay create okay uh looks like we created the share hack me is there and normally uh, you can access go back and check the permissions um, and check the shared permission ntfs permission there's two different permissions shared permission is when you access sharing ntfs is when you access the file locally so we should be able to go to the networks here um, and actually access the files on here okay this is probably not the box see if we do a backslash backslash i don't know if the ip address i copied still there no Let's see if we config copy the address if you put it on the backslash see all the folder is going to show up right so we have the shared folder shared up and this one doesn't even have anything we can even put a new file uh, let me see if you can get access to this, this file okay control s to save so now we have machine and we have a machine that uh, join to the domain we also um, create a shared folder as with smb1 to show so if i go to my windows 10 machine now it's put up now you'll see here uh, it shows up as a user that's a local account but if you want to log into the domain see it says deep here you can type deep and then backslash the administrator account that we created and then you need to give the administrator's password uppercase p number one okay now that's gonna actually now this computer is logging into that active directory domain over um over it controls over that domain control that we just created but i'm gonna look here see what new results we get here on my kali machine now clear this out and i'm gonna run enium for linux again okay let's run the enium for linux again and see if the results going to be ah why do you get small Going to be different okay took a little longer than it ran before too so let's go back to the top okay uh, so target here uh here let's see got domain name so now we got a domain name this says before it's a work group now it's saying hey the domain name is deep right so uh, already the domain name is out there that's pretty bad okay uh let's see what else is the domain name is here ah the domain sid the security identification was managed to pull out okay um all this information we had that before could not find users with nt access denied uh, smb1 is disabled this is i'm not sure why this thing is disabled uh, it should be enabled since we enable it um uh, it's saying trying to connect to the smb share with null share trying with uh, port 139 s445 um surprisingly this has been failed maybe it's something with the new uh, for linux command okay i should be able to mount those ones now uh could not get a sid for so these were there before but we did get the domain name now okay so i decided to quickly run the smb vulnerability script so what i did was i ran the smb vulnerability all the scripts okay smb one script you, you know how you guys know how to do this then i put the wildcard to uh, enumerate all the uh, vulnerabilities related to SMB and then I just use the 139 and 445 so here now we got the information saying hey 
uh, this is this vulnerability is false but access is denied but ms17 vulnerability this is vulnerable it's remote code execution vulnerability okay uh, that one uh, shows up which cve information risk factor is high okay so now you know this this is vulnerable right based on the end map uh, the, uh, we know there's a vulnerability uh, i did run the enium for linux command right so let's see um i know uh, there's a um, metasploit module so i'll show you that really quick but a uh, few other things you could run uh, here is um where is it i did run nmb lookup to find out the, again some similar information that we found from enium for linux um, but let's uh, since we haven't used Metasploit, but I want to show you guys really quick. There is a Metasploit module uh, that you could run, okay? So let's do MSF console and see if we can find that specific vulnerability that we search for. It's called M what is it? MS7, I think. Uh, should have outputted my Nmap scan to something else, right? That's what I didn't do. Anyway, that's okay. Okay. Uh, for you out. Now uh, let's search C R S E A. Search for MS seventeen. Okay, and that should give you a bunch of them, right? But I think if I remember correct, the one we were looking at is uh, MS one seven zero Y zero one seven. We might be even even used to be able to use this uh, the eternal blue. Okay. Uh, so that's one of the ones that we could use. I think we could use the SMB uh, scanner here to scan for SMB. Um, actually, let's use that. Let's use that one and see. Um, see what's going to happen. Okay, so let's use uh, six. You could type, or you can just type use six. This new option here, and if you type options, you'll see what other things you need to set up, right? Um, check pipe here i think we need to definitely ports are already set up because it's smb uh, authentication you could um this is the username smb user this basic one set up okay but you need to set up the uh our remote host okay so we need to do that first uh, so let's go ahead and set up the remote host um set our yeah, I'm not typing set our host i already up yep. What's the IP address of that machine? God. Okay. Let's see if I can paste it. Okay. Set our house and then you can type options again. You should see that's uh, set up. And let's see run and see what happens. Okay. It's already detected the same thing, right? It says it's vulnerable to MS1 Windows 7 2008. Okay. Uh, scan one house. So we, again, it basically shows the vulnerability, but I want to show here, let's see if we can use that um, um, back to go back, clear to clear the screen. Let's go back and uh, do that quick search that we did for, uh, let's see, yeah. And then let's see if we can use the eternal blue one, right? That's another one. So use, uh, what is nine, okay. Again here, options. Okay, you need to look at it here. Is it 134? No, that's the local host, okay? You need to definitely set up the remote host. So I see my command is still there, hopefully. Okay, up arrow here. Uh, set up the remote host, okay? Uh, again, show options. It's done, so we have the local post. I, remote host is set up normally it should show when you set up the remote host uh, i'm not sure why it's not showing up um, and then um, you could run check command run command so let's do the check command first okay so looks like this method does not support check we're using 017 ms17 eternal blue Ooh, I, I picked the wrong one. It's back here. Because this is Windows 8, if you paid attention. Which one is the one with the eternal blue? Yeah, 9 is the Windows 8. I think we need to use just the 0, 1 eternal blue. So let's use 8. 
I'll just pay attention to here. Okay. Then let's uh, set the host. Okay. Let's do the show options. Okay. Maybe now it's yeah. Now the remote host is showing up because I used the wrong module. And let's do see if we can use the check option works now. Okay. Now it did work. Okay. I was using auxiliary scanner. The scanner we did before host is vulnerable. Okay. And let's see if we can run. Hopefully this would work and you we can always go back in this uh, modules uh, that we worked on so let's make this tiny bit smaller okay eternal boot can crash the midterm machine hopefully it won't crash um, Uh, so trying to do this. There's so many connection to this one. I'm trying to see if we got a connection from the Kali machine. This all 139 to 138. See, it's buffer overflow eternal blue that's why eternal blue sometimes crash the system now I'm gonna pause it and see if this would work and we'll come back okay so for some reason the session failed normally if you have the session created if you can type sessions command and also use their sessions I'm not sure why it fails I know this worked it's because this is the right module Windows 7 and 2002 uh, works Windows 7 2002 R2 because this is so 2002 uh, let's make sure I use the right IP address 192.71.39 7139 yeah uh, but I just want to show you here how this works I'm gonna run it once more post this uh, I didn't change anything this is my local machine that's my local port um, this sh should work unless I have updated the machine and the eternal blue is patched but it says it's not patched okay I figured out the mistake I made so let's clear this out options uh, I did set up my reverse machine 132 instead of a different machine. I, I didn't change it because I thought it picked the right one. But my midterm machine is on the host only, so I need to use the 132. So pay attention to that when you guys do it. Uh, so I had to go and check the uh, local host to 132 to map the right local hosts. That's the Kali's IP address on the same subnet as the Windows 10 machine 70 subnet. So I had to put that, I have to change that. Once I change that, it did work. Uh, so let's show you guys it should, this works too. If you do run, exploit multiple options and this should run and hopefully, sometimes you have to run multiple because this is a buffer overflow exploit. It's writing to the buffer and trying to overflow the buffer and get a reverse shell. So might have run before some few times. It can crash your midterm. See, this was happened. So my actual midterm this time it crashed. So you're gonna have to restart this machine if that happens Sam um, so restart the guest okay that can happen memory corruption can hack up happen it I did manage to get a reverse shell also uh, hopefully it'll work let me um, restart the machine and get back to you okay let's give it a try system boots up and you might have to do this few times again pay attention to the midterm here see if it's gonna um, again I enable SMB here this I'll talk about that in a bit see if it works you have to check the options again uh, yeah session open now so that's good so it worked machine didn't crash okay so now if you type uh, get uid so who am i okay now I'm, I'm on that windows machine if you do dir uh, you'll see all the directories going to be listed on that windows machine uh, did i crash it oh, no it did okay all these directories uh, so where am i it's going to be on probably system 32 directory so let's uh, let's see if we can change it to the root directory cdc okay 
TIR might not work. Okay, I'm gonna do CD dot dot all the way, CD dot dot all the way, TIR, let's see where I'm at. Add. Okay, now I'm at the root, uh, uh, the home di uh, C directory. Uh, C, remember we created a file here. Uh, what directory I'm on? So I see the Windows. Let's see if I can make, yeah, the test directory and hack me directory. So CD hack me ls. There should be a file that we created. If we type type uh, hack me dot txt, you should be able to read that file. I thought the command is type to read on Windows machine. You can get the file. I don't think cat works. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, cat works. Okay, see if you can get access to this, right? It doesn't read the right way. So some of the command metaprotect shell doesn't work. But I am logged in as highest. So again, remember I talked to you guys about uh, at the beginning on the other lecture. Um, who am I? Okay. Some reason doesn't get you ID I'm not typing properly okay NT authority system right remember that SMB is running as an NT authority the service and it's running the system account that's the highest account this is the user account that we logged in that's the service account remember pay attention to the service accounts are different from the regular user account but now I can go ahead and use the net use command or command that I showed you guys on the lecture one to create a user uh, so that's how you use the metaprotect shell and if you type sessions, you should see the sessions, um, what sessions are there, session ID, um, and then uh, you could log, so find out the different session sessions, should be sessions. If there's multiple sessions, it'll show the ID, you can log into the session. If you, uh, if you back, I don't know, back or exit, yeah, exit from here. Again, if you type sessions here, if that session still open, you could be able to log in. So that's how you say eternal blue exploit to exploit the SMB vulnerability on your Windows machine. Also, I want to point out here on the Windows, uh, I, I will post this command somewhere. I had to enable um, some of the SMB uh, version one manually because when I ran this command here, let's see, I might, I'm probably going to have to restart this machine to do this. Uh, SMB uh, client here it's not showing any shared folders. So that's something I'm trying to troubleshoot. Let me restart this and see if this would. Okay, finally, I wanna point out here for the last, let's say we already got a reverse shell. Now we have the administrator's password, but we wanna get the Active Directory usernames and password. So this is the step how to do it. And I will include the cheat sheet to do this really quickly. There's a whole cheat sheet of enumeration exploitation uh, for pen testing. It's gonna be on the module six. So. Uh, you use the RPC client command dash u specify the username uh, domain and the username and the IP address and it's ask for the password. So let's say we you know the password or we racist the password that let you log in. Okay. Now here you can run multiple different commands. For an example, uh, SRV info gives you the information of the service. What kind of service uh, network is in there? Uh, you could do uh, let's see um, enum en U M T O T O M U S E R S in your DOM users that skills you all the users on the domain name. Remember, we looked at all these uh, domain names. Now you have access to all the domain names. Not only that, uh, there's another command called in your um, uh, where is it? Uh, get the user uh, the U S S U I D S. That's called um, L S A E N umsid umsid that's going to show you all the sids for the users okay uh, read the active directory user passwords you could do that um, set up the user information i'll show you i'll let you guys leave for that okay um, you can change the password uh, but you can uh, change the passwords for some uh, uh, not for the admin users um, you might be able to add to different groups Okay, so there's multiple different commands you could do here. Uh, again, um, here a short uh, short video using RPC clients, setting up the domain controller, and exploiting the machines using the one of the SMB vulnerabilities. Uh, for some reason, when I use SMB client here, uh, I could not um, 
open any of the path unable to open credential file uh, I'm not sure if my let's see if I can ping it what's going on but we'll uh, try with some of the SMB commands uh, yeah you can ping it but not sure this should be a not H it's H for the client it should be a where well, you could just run it by itself no we can't uh, I know it's the A is the one to use authentication for a file. Yeah, uh, for some reason it's not letting me use SMB numerator. Yeah, so normally you could be able to use the L command. I don't know why I was using A. And without the user, you should be able to log in and you this option uh, dash N. I think it's dash dash no dash pass if I'm correct. Okay, that should again it's saying the SMB one's disable I enable the SMB one maybe it's a um, bug on the operating system so I'm gonna stop here but now you have an idea um, find the SMB vulnerabilities using the nmap command that we use uh, and then find the exploit modules using Metasploit and get access to the system.